I'm not with my reading glasses and I'm not going to be uh, on this life for a very long time. Yeah. But I just want to talk on. I just want to talk on. Promoting false narratives. Promoting false narratives to suppress known truths. You can only suppress the truth for a while, but you can never, ever suppress it forever. You can never suppress the truth forever, especially when there are documented facts. When there are evidence in papers, in video recordings, in text messages, you can't suppress the truth forever. You can only try to suppress it for a while to a gullible set of people. Some people out there are very intelligent. They don't buy everything they read on the media or everything they, they read on social media or the tabloids. You can't suppress the truth for a long time. And when you will never allow sleeping dogs to lie. There's a saying in my village that goes, if a child says the mother will not sleep, right? That child also will not sleep. I don't know if you can hear me. Is the, is the audio okay? Okay. Yeah, so you can hear me. Good. Now... I'm not here to explain anything to anyone, but I am here because I think I owe it to the number of women that I have encouraged over so over the past few years to come out of toxic marriages. I think I owe it to them to know that they should never ever keep silent when they feel they are being bullied. When they feel that they, have, they don't have a voice. There are so many women I have helped to come out of toxic marriages, just like I have done mine. And there are so many out there that are too afraid to come out because they see the comments like, oh, taste buds, she's an adulteress. I am doing it for them. I'm not doing it for me. You can put the adulteress tag on my forehead, right? If divorcing my ex 12 years ago and starting a relationship before the end of my 10-year divorce lawsuit makes me an adulteress, I am going to wear that tag like a crown with pride on my forehead. For every woman going through a divorce, that believes that because our judicial system takes 10 years to 12 years and even more to issue a divorce certificate. If those women believe that because they are going through a 10-year divorce, a 12-year divorce, they don't have the right to find love. They don't have the right to move on with their lives. I am doing it for those women. If you put the adulteress tag on my forehead, I will wear it with pride. I divorced my ex 12 years ago. I filed for the divorce. So if they are trying to change the narrative to make it look like I was caught in an adultery and he divorced me, that is not the case. I filed for a divorce from my ex based on a sexual differences our sexual orientation we have different sexual orientations that is the story that is the story that can never ever change no matter how they try to disguise it i filed and i remember quite clearly in court my lawyer asked them if they have any evidence whatsoever to show that i knew who daddy freeze was or that he freeze knew who i was before 2012, they should bring the evidence forward. 
up until today, no singular evidence to show that I knew who Daddy Freeze was before I filed for a divorce. So I filed for a divorce on the grounds of different sexual orientation. That was why I filed. Toxic marriage, battery, those were the grounds on which I filed. That is in my court documents and it can never change. And should they have any evidence contrary to that, we are currently in the Supreme Court, so they should bring all the evidence to the Supreme Court. Like I said, I am not here to explain anything to anyone other than the fact that the adultery tag on my forehead is not the reason why I filed for a divorce. I filed for a divorce. I filed from my ex based on different sexual orientation. He's still alive. He has messages. There are evidence. There are letters. At any point in time, the Supreme Court can subpoena MTN. Oh, yes. They can subpoena MTN and bring forward text messages. If need be, that can be done in court. So, I am not worried about all those things. But I am more concerned about women that think that because they are going through divorce. It's like saying presently, if you, uh, may you, Educhi, should date, should decide that she wants to start dating. She is committing adultery. Right? Legally, legally, they will say, May you, Edoche, is committing adultery because her divorce is not yet final. But is she still practically married to you? The answer is no, they are not. Right? So any woman that files for a divorce and decides to start dating is an adulteress. But any man that files for a divorce can go ahead and remarry even before that divorce is finalized. Men can remarry even without filing for a divorce from their ex-wives. Men can remarry even without asking permission from their wives. But women cannot date after filing for a divorce. That is the country we live in. And that is why I am doing this live. You see, this narrative has to change. This narrative has to change. Women are not slaves. When a woman files for a divorce from a man, she's no longer married to that man. And the divorce is taking years to happen. If that woman should find love, she has every right, every right to be happy in that relationship. And if that comes with a price tag, of being called an adulteress, wear the pride, wear the adulteress tag with a crown, wear it boldly with a crown. I'd rather be called an adulteress for filing for, for a divorce, moving on with my life as a single woman and dating, than to be in a marriage where I am cheating. We have so many married women out there that are in their marriages, but they are dating. They are in their marriages. They are having affairs. They are in their marriages. They are bringing children that do not belong to their husbands into the marriage. But guess what? They are married. It is called Lagos marriage, Abuja marriage, marriage of understanding. The man has his side chicks. The woman has her boyfriend, but they are married. I would rather, as a woman, stay 100% faithful to my husband. And the moment I feel the marriage is over, I will file for a divorce and move on with my life. And if moving on with my life after filing for a divorce gives me the tag, adulteress, I will wear it with a crown. My ex is listening to this. If I were so bad, if I was such an adulteress, it is 12 years since I left you. Can you leave me and my new husband? Let us have peace.
You've been going about crying for the past 12 years. They stole your wife. They stole your wife. Making me look like a commodity, like a piece of furniture that has no voice. I am a human being. I am a woman. I have a voice. I am not a piece of furniture for any man to steal, to carry, to lift. This has been going on for 12 years. They stole your wife. They stole your wife. We are presently in the Supreme Court. We moved from the court, high court to the Court of Appeal. And as at last month, we moved the case to the Supreme Court. Until we get justice, we are not resting on this matter. So why don't you exercise patience, be a man, and wait for the judgment from the Supreme Court? Instead of going to meet tabloids that have no credibility, if you ask me. That is why our eyes will not carry that information. That is a reputable news publishing firm. They wouldn't carry your story. So please, we are in the Supreme Court. Can you please exercise patience and allow the Supreme Court to give its final verdict? And for all you women coming to my page to troll me, trolls don't bother me. They have never bothered me. The only thing, people that know me, they know me, I'm a workaholic. Right from my Potako days when I was the MD CEO of the Tachi Foods Nigeria Limited, I walk around the clock. When this thing happened, even yesterday, right, I was in the event center where we were catering for one of our corporate clients. For the past three days, I haven't really slept. We've been cooking back to back parties, one party after another party, right? That is what puts food on my table. Not all this. All this don't put food on my table. You're spending your data to come and troll me. It doesn't change anything. I'm in a happy place. I am in a happy place that the freeze makes me happy. He has given to me what I could not get with my ex. He's helping me raise children that are not his. When my ex refused to pay his children's school fees, he refused to send feeding money, no accommodation. For the past 12 years, I have been feeding my children, clothing them, sending them to school, caring for them, unassisted. Why? Because I asked for joint custody. I have always preached this in a divorce situation. Couples divorcing should please understand the importance of joint custody. Can I help you? What? I'm not with my glasses. I can't see him. Bring my glasses, please. So, I asked for joint custody. My ex asks for sole custody. That's where all this problem is coming from. Why would you ask for sole custody? You are telling me you have a sister that is mature enough, a sister you trust to raise my children. So I shall hand over my children that were 10 year old, 8 year old, and I think 6 year old to your sister to raise, right? So that is where all of this is starting from. While I wanted joint custody. so now listen if you're a woman out there or you're a man out there and you're currently going to divorce please i beg of you do not deny your ex the opportunity of seeing his children yes your ex might be a monster but to the children he's still their parents i asked for joint custody he wanted sole custody he said I was an unfit mother because mm. I filed for a divorce from him. Okay? Uh -huh. so Sorry, babe, one second. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just even going to close my camera because a lot of people don't know your side of the story. Yes. So they should come and hear your side of the story. Uh -huh. We have 1,500 people in the house now. Very good. Oh, yeah. Share your own side of the story. I'm not going to talk anything.
you see like, like i said i'm not even here to share stories for people i'm here to tell women out there that if divorcing your husband if you're in a toxic marriage you are in an abusive relationship if divorcing your husband and moving on with another partner will give you the adult uh, adulteress tag wear it on your head like a crown wear it with pride in court the judge looked at me this was after no the son the son the son that was defending my ex this was the ninth year the ninth year after i had filed for a divorce the judge asked me she said do you are you in a relationship are you presently in a relationship i told the judge yes i am in a relationship presently i am in a relationship presently i have a song in my new relationship and i said my lord it has been nine years actually 11 years two years of separation and nine years of divorce that is the total of 11 years so my lord it has been 11 years since i left my ex-husband and i am presently in a relationship i didn't hide it from the judge and she looked at me and continued writing and the son looked at me and said my lord can you see she's a prostitute a prostitute he called me a son called me a prostitute in open court because i was in a relationship after 11 years of leaving my ex two years of separation and nine years inside divorce he called me a prostitute and he said you are a self-acclaimed adulteress and i looked at the sign i said i am not a self-acclaimed adulteress i moved on this is the 11th year are you expecting me to stay celibate what was the ground the, one of the major grounds on which i filed was because of sexual deprivation i was in a marriage with somebody that had a different sexual orientation from myself i was being punished and throughout the 10 years of that marriage i was faithful faithful i have an email written in his own handwriting and i will bring it to any court where he apologized for all the wrong he did to me in that marriage and he applauded me for my dedication for my faithfulness for my entrepreneurship spirit and for putting the family together despite everything he did to me for 10 years and he begged me not to leave him i have that email that is why i'm saying you can try all you can to hide the truth the truth is documented in papers it is documented in mails it is documented in text messages at any point in time mtn can be out. so if you're trying to distort the truth the real truth why i divorced you as long as i'm alive each time you come with this your narrative i will counter it each time you come with this your narrative i will remind the public that i benedita Ilechi, i filed for a divorce from you it's not the other way around i wasn't caught caught in an adultery i filed because of your monstrosity to me i filed i filed you begged documents of you begging is still with me and i said no so everything you're doing is as a result of your anger your bitterness that you couldn't continue keeping me in that cage for 10 years i was an executive nanny to my children i wasn't your wife i was an executive nanny my role was to give birth to children nurture the children take them to disneyland every year and show up for your cocktail dinners well dressed dressed up dripping in gold looking good that was my job and you will showcase me oh this is my wife have you met my wife that was my job to you for 10 years that was my duty to you for 10 years 
And when I got tired and I woke up at 32, I said, no, I want to know what it feels like to be married. I want to know what it feels like to be loved. I, I told you I was leaving you. And I told you that I wasn't just leaving you, that I'm going to leave you so that I can be in a better relationship, that I desire to know what it feels like to actually be married. I told you that. I desire to be married, to know what it feels like to be married because I was never married for one day. On paper, we were married, but we were never married. You know we were never married. We, we were never married. We never shared the bedroom for one day. The only time you will invite me to your bedroom is when you want us to have a child. So what is this crying? I've been quiet 12 years, crying. This evening I saw eight minutes except of my nearly two hours interview with Linda Ikeji. There was an interview I did with Linda, Linda Ikeji seven years ago. And I think I saw eight minutes of that video on Tunde Edna this evening, right? So some of you can go there to go and watch. So, so please do not try to distort history you think over time the story will change the narrative will change oh i divorced her because she was an adulteress i am here i am alive Pons, my Pons, come and carry this story oh Pons, come and carry my, this side of the story my by children are now, newspaper. Right? come and carry this side of the story Pons. Come and carry this side of the story. Bias newspaper. Continue your My story. My children are now adults, right? They know the story. At least the older ones witnessed the battery. The older ones. I remembered my oldest daughter asking me after she came back from her friend's house. I think she was 10. She came back. She said, Mommy, I went to visit my friend. And I noticed that her daddy and her mommy they sleep in the same room. They sleep on the bed. Mommy, how come you don't sleep in daddy's room? She's now a woman. She asked me this question nearly 12 years ago, 13 years ago, 14 years ago. I, I told her, I said, go and ask your father why we don't share the same room. Go and ask your dad why he doesn't allow me to sleep in his room. My kids are here, they are grown. All my children took turns in sleeping on my bed from the day they were born till I filed for divorce. They used to take turns. On Monday, Daniela would sleep on my, in my room. Tuesday, my son would sleep in my room. Wednesday, Amara baby would sleep in my room. Thursday, Abiba would sleep in my room. That is how I raised them. My kids are all grown. That is how I raised them. I'm a married woman. I was a married woman, but I lived alone. And I keep preaching to women. If you are single in your marriage, divorce. There is no need doing Lagos marriage, Abuja marriage. I was giving the offer, uh, why don't you go and get a boyfriend? Yes, I said I will not get a boyfriend. I am going to file for a divorce. I don't believe in married women cheating. I don't believe in married women cheating that is not my cup of tea if you have any evidence any human being you know the 10 years we were married bring it forward i disrespect married women that cheat i call them weaklings rather than cheat file for a divorce and come out from that marriage and while you are in that divorce should you see any man that you are you feel you want to be romantically involved with please do and be firm about it there is no need doing hanky panky when i was in the university a lot of people they used to call me handbag like um i i move around alone i don't really socialize if you go to my social media you know i'm not a very social person you hardly see me jumping from one O one day to another O one day, or one pink ash or a bit to a green gilly to a blue gilly. I don't do that. I don't have that time. I am family oriented. I have time only for three things: my husband, 
my kids and my work. My husband, my kids, my work. My husband, my kids, my work. I don't have time for any other thing. So there's no time to cheat. Cheat for what? It's a waste of time. It's degrading. It is demeaning. If I am dating you, I want to hold your hands and eat popcorn on the streets with you. If I am dating you, I want to eat ice cream and do public display of affection, right? PDA. I'm, a, I'm very big on PDA. So I don't know how to do this, hide and seek. Oh, I'm dating you, see me in the corner. I don't know how to do it. So I wasn't going to cheat. I wasn't going to cheat on my ex-husband and I never cheated on him for one day. One day. His pain is that I continued with the divorce proceedings despite all the pleading to call off the divorce, take out the divorce proceedings from the court. I refused. I said I have suffered enough. Ten years of suffering, it's enough. At 33, I got married at 23. I was 23 years old, young. I think I even put up one of my wedding pictures. See how, like, one tiny broomstick, no makeup, just small girl. I was 23 when I got married. When I discovered <laughs> what I had gotten myself into, it took me 10 years to wriggle myself out of it. I was 33 when I came out of it. And my ex, I remember him telling me something. He said, should you continue with this divorce proceedings, I'm going to drag you in court until you are old and gray. Old and gray. He told me that he would drag me in this court case until I am old and gray. So when my divorce case continued or spanned the period of 10 years, I wasn't surprised. But guess what? I beat him to his game. He felt... Naive Benedict. I think even when I met that refuse, that they refuse to call me Benedict at Ogo. It's like a nickname if you're everybody you know what it means. Benedict at Ogo. My ex used to say, You're so naive. You're so naive. How, how are you so naive? I I I can be so naive. That is just me. That's how I am. So I think he played on that for a very long time. So he believed that if he dragged me long enough in the divorce case. I will never have the opportunity of remarrying. I will never have the opportunity of being in a relationship. But guess what? I beat him to his game. I beat him to his game while he was thinking that I was going to wait for the 10 years. <laughs> for the 10 years of the divorce proceeding to pan out before I started a relationship. He failed. He failed because once again, I am not a people's person. I don't do things for people. I don't do things to please people. When I do anything, the first thing I ask myself is this thing you are doing, how is it beneficial to me? How is it beneficial to the people around me? And my family, like, are they going to be okay with it? I don't think about the public. Like, no, adulteress, you knock them, I'll be, you know, knock them. You go pay tight for the pee. Those things don't bother me, really. It doesn't bother me. Why? Because I'm in a happy place, right? I will do this over and over again. I will file for this divorce over and over and over and over again. I will start this relationship with Daddy Freeze before my divorce comes to an end over and over and over again. Because I've always wanted to find love. I've always wanted to be loved. And I've always wanted a situation whereby I would love and I would be appreciated. In court, the son, I remember him, he called me Lovina. He said, Madam, I like you so much. You're such a fine woman. You know the reason why you are in this mess you find yourself in i was looking at him i didn't say anything he said because you are a lovina he was laughing you know making fun of me he said because you are a lovina that's why you are in this situation you find yourself in and i smiled i said with all pleasure so the said benedicta admits to being a self-acclaimed adulteress let me wear the crown for all you women out there hmm? All you women out there that have chosen to file for a divorce, 
And after filing, you know, not before, after filing for the divorce, you have chosen to start a new relationship. They are going to make a beautiful crown, tagged adulteress, and they'll put it on your head, wear it with pride. But what I will never support, what I will never condone, is cheating inside your marriage. A lot of people will come here to type nonsense on my page. Many of you are cheating inside your marriage. I never did that, and I will never do that. I uh, babe, never did that, and I will one, never do that. Second, a lot of people are believing that I'm the one with the sexual orientation change. A lot of people are typing that. It's crazy. Please help me crazy. clear them. My help me clear them. Ex. They're not to get sense like that. I I don't know about anybody. Me, I'm, I know I'm sure straight. I be baby, am I not straight? You are straight like a ruler. <laughs> and that is why I'm with you. That Thank is you. why I am with you. That is why I am with you. My ex, if you don't know the meaning of ex, please look it up in the dictionary. My ex and I had different sexual orientation. Hmm? So I filed for a divorce. I, I'm not the ex, so before you start thinking bright things in your brain, so... Daddy yeah. Fritz is my current husband. I'm wife. not going to even talk about... I don't want to say anything so that it will not look like me and you are... Mm -mm. I just want you to say you, what you feel from your own side. Because you see, eh? This matter has gone on long enough. It is long enough. This is 12 years. Sorry, we have started the 13th year. 13 years. You see, all of you, all of you who are laughing on, on social media, I pray it happens to your daughters. I pray it happens to your mothers. I pray it happens to your sisters. Any woman you find, any woman you hold dear to your heart, I pray that, that the Nigerian system will be exploited by wicked people to put you in punishment and slavery for 13 years. This woman left, filed for a divorce when she was 33. She's going to be 46 this year. This matter is still on. <laughs> the matter is still on 13 years later. Apart from our justice system that is a comedy skit let's tell ourselves the truth let's tell ourselves the truth how many people will stay celibate for 13 years for six months if you are in this comment years. section and you can stay celibate for 13 years raise up your hands because as long as you have S intercourse with anybody within those 13 years, you are an adulterer, you are an adulteress according to our legal system, in case you don't understand the meaning. As long as you have S intercourse for one day, leave relationship, just one day S intercourse with a man or a woman, you have become an adulterer and an adulteress. As long as that divorce case is still in our Nigerian courts. And trust me, it's going to be there for years to come. Mine ended 10 years. I met somebody that was in their 14th year. Daddy Fritz, did I not tell you? I met a lady that was in her 14th year. She married a Malo. She had married a Malo and she had had two boys for the Malo. And she was coming to court for the divorce proceedings. So please, we only hear this adulteress, adulteress, when a woman is involved. Eh? How many men have been tagged adulterer for marrying another woman even without divorcing their previous wives? How many? Where have they dragged them into? We are talking about adulterer, adulteress for a divorce case that is in court. Not adulterer or adulteress for somebody that is in the marriage because that is the narrative they are trying to push. If you have evidence that while I was married to you before January 10th, 2012. I filed for a divorce January 10th, 2012. The documents are there in court. If you have any evidence prior to that date showing that I committed adultery with any human being, please bring it forward. 
whether man, whether woman, bring it forward before January 10th, 2012. That was the date I filed for a divorce. Bring it forward. And let us, let us talk about adultery and adulteress. Like I said, though, I'm not here to explain to anybody because really, I don't care. I, I really don't care. I don't care about the tags, right? But I'm doing this for the women that are in my WhatsApp group. The women that are undergoing battery right now as I'm talking to, to you. We have a group where we have women that are married to closeted guys, in case you don't know it. I've had this WhatsApp group for the past two years. Because ever since my story came out, women that were going through exactly what I went through, they started reaching out to me. That was why I started Life's Journey with Benedicta. Life's Journey with Benedicta was not for the grounds. Life's Journey with Benedicta was mm -hmm. women empowerment program mm -hmm. to support women emotionally, mm -hmm. mentally, mm -hmm. and financially mm -hmm. to come out of toxic relationships. That was why we started Life's Journey. And because I started my Taste Buzz Culinary Academy, for some nine months now, I haven't had the time to do any live. We've not had the time to do any live, but we still communicate on our WhatsApp. I am doing this video for those women. So they should continue to stand strong. They shouldn't care and see me all over social media. Oh God, look at how they are dragging this woman. Ah, I don't think I have the heart. I don't think I can continue with this divorce. Baba, continue. Sometimes for the price of for peace, right? For peace to reign, you have to go to war. How much do you value your freedom? How much do you value your happiness? How much do you value your mental health? Is it worth going to war? Calling me an adulteress is a small price to pay for my freedom. Calling me an adulteress is a small price for me to pay for my happiness. Calling me an adulteress is a small price for me to pay. <laughs> now that I have the love of my life, I am happy. We are happy. We are living our lives. Baba, you go look for another name for dictionary. Adulteress is small. Adulteress is small. It is small because I know where I am coming from. I know the hell I saw in my previous marriage. I know the hell I saw in my previous marriage. Do you think I was hungry? I wasn't hungry. So for you to see a woman wake up one morning and leave the marriage that gives her financial comfort, something is wrong. I wasn't hungry in my previous marriage. My kids were well taken care of. Every year was Disney. If they don't go to Disney, they will go to Butlins. If they don't go to Butlins, they will, they will, uh, they will go to Lego. We were traveling, we were having fun. They were having fun, but I was crying. I was miserable. I had undergone mental, acute mental depression. They put me on medication that I rejected. I had gone through hell and high waters. And when I filed, I was being followed. Kidnappers were sent after me, but when the Matter rich anti SARS. What's the name of that we, girl? Sars? Eh, 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 that one that is in trouble now. What's his name? That current uh, uh, SARS girl that they just released for prison. Now we, now in, now in, we carry. We still have the video of the kidnapper. We still have the, the video. The kidnapper is still with me. The file, the petition I wrote to the police in um, uh, anti SARS Ikeja is there. As at that time, this man was. There. The person that was in charge, what's his name? I just had to, uh, Kayoro, I mean, what's his name? What's the name of that guy Ab that was in charge? Abakiari. Abakiari, yes. Abakiari, I sat with Abakiari face to face in anti SARS Lagos. And I told Abakiari to help me, save me, my life is in danger. That I am going to be in court to testify and People were following me, and one of the kidnappers was caught and taken to anti -Sars, and he was beaten. The video is there, and they asked him, who sent you to follow this woman? And he said, it was her ex that sent us. He said, it is there in video recordings. It's there in my police documents, right? It was after that incident that I went to Linda Ikeji. Reluctantly, 
I went to Linda Ikeji to give that interview because I felt I could go missing. And should I go missing the whole world, including the company he was working for then, I had to call the name of the company because it was a save my soul interview. I needed people to know that this was what I was going to 